Greetings. Uh, all right, so it's been uh, quite a while since I did a video on the outdoor box turtle enclosure. In fact, it's been well over a year. In that time, though, we have moved um, at the end of May of 2017, to be exact. Um, so one of the very first priorities was to build a new enclosure outside and uh, as quickly as possible. Moving sucks as it is, but pretty stressful to try and get this completed. Uh, we did have the luxury of keeping the former property, so I was able to keep them outside uh, there while I had time to work on it. I'm not sure what I would have done if that wasn't an option. So this time we wanted to go bigger, um, larger water feature, and uh, new property certainly allows that. So the footage that I do have is from October 2017. Um, it's a very wet day, rainy day, about only about 60 degrees out. Um, unfortunately, while I was recording, it kept cutting out. I had noticed uh, using my phone again, um, which has the memory capacity of a Legend of Zelda save file on the NES. So basically nothing, extremely frustrating. So when we do get to the footage, I'm just going to commentate over it because it really doesn't make any sense. Um, once again, it'll be a little bit shaky, but I think in the future I'm going to try and uh, remedy that, maybe use my tripod and my real camera. So first off, I had to determine where we were actually going to put the new enclosure at. Um, kind of had that figured out before we even moved. There's a section on the side yard that was going to work out nicely based on how much sun it was going to get. There's also a ton of trees that kind of give it a little bit of cover, and I was going to butt it up to the start of where the forest begins. Um, after I had a crew come in and take down a bunch of dead trees over on that side yard area, pretty much got started right away. Um, once again, I used pressure treated lumber. Uh, this stuff's gonna hold up over time, not forever, but uh, it should last for years and years to come. Uh, this time I did not dig as much as I did I did rent out a trencher to get um, going. Uh, you can kind of see in some of these photos how contoured this ground is, how high it is in one spot and low it is in the other. We'll kind of get to that later. So I guess I'll uh, take this opportunity to thank my friend Alan for coming over and helping me with just about everything. Also, my friend Ted. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> um, one other thing to keep in mind too, uh, once the thing was functional, as is you know, the ponds up and running, I have the electric wire ran around it, I added the turtle. So I did not plan it the same way as I did the last one and the way I wanted to. Um, that's something I'm going to have to get to on the in the spring. Uh, by the time I was actually done with it though, I had a lot of weeds and grasses that had grown in and provided quite a bit of cover. Uh, I did add some wood uh, around, um, kind of dug out and then sunk in one of the pieces from the original enclosure, just for shelter, for them to get out, um, tuck themselves away nicely. But um, well, I guess we'll get to the footage then. So the enclosure is 24 feet long by 16 feet wide. Uh, again, pressure treated lumber, on the long sides, I used 12 footers and then just full 16s. On the shorter sides, there's supports along the way, just two by four, and then it's capped off all the way around on the inside to prevent anyone from getting in a corner or on a side even and climbing their way out. Uh, this worked for me in the past. Um, again, like I said, it was a very rainy day, again, uh, October 2017. And you could see, you know, there's still quite a few weeds um, in the enclosure. It was much more dense earlier on, and I, I really wanted to get it planted, but like I said, once it was up and running, I had to get the animals over. Um, running over there every other day or two, you know, three days, is. I wasn't able to spend much time or, you know, 
check up on them as, as much as I normally would. I just pretty much stop in, feed them, take a few quick glances, and then I was on my way. So um, here's the pond, which I'm 70% sure I will be shrinking um, in size. I just got a 300 gallon per hour pump in there. Uh, and this is Shelly, for those who have seen the first video, this is an animal that uh, I've had for a very long time. It was kind of like a rescue. Um, his beak is, yes, very long still. Uh, the vet was never able to shorten it up past that. He's the most dominant turtle in here, the largest by a short margin. And uh, here's uh, one of the females. Um, she, I did see her nesting at the other enclosure, you know, uh, last season, but, uh, you know, I have no clue if any eggs were really laid or if turtles are overwintering there now. And here's my system for uh, my electric wire. Uh, there's a grounding rod that I couldn't get any deeper. It's definitely online because I tested it myself. Uh, it gives quite the jolt. Um, this time I did mount them on the outside instead of on top. Um, after speaking with Chris Leone at Garden State Tortoise and watching some video footage of his enclosures, I came to the conclusion that's the best route to do. And this was a trench that I had dug to run permanent power here because at this time it's still tempt in. And I, I'm going to put another enclosure in this area, so I got to rethink that. Uh, that enclosure will be mainly for my North American wood turtles. And there you can see kind of the side yard. Um, whoever planted those trees all in a row, I mean, it was a pretty creepy dude. I'm going to have to try and figure out something else there. Um, here's one of the hides I was talking about, and there's a little dude running in there to take some cover. You know, and again, it's only 60 degrees out, so not a lot of activity going on uh, when I did film this. So talking about the pond here, um, even at this moment, it's covered in snow, but uh, you know, I lined the entire pond with grasses and mosses and weeds. You know, as you can see, there's liner popping up here. Um, I'm hoping, you know, and I had success with this before that, uh, you know, plant growth will go ahead and cover that up. You know, I, it's constantly, uh, you know, last year it was just me kind of shoring things up, leveling things out, you know, maybe one day here, three days later, um, you know, and I added wood and everything along the, the edges, like in particular this piece was really nice. Um, I actually pulled it out to put it in a fish tank, but it ended up being cedar, so I got to rethink that. Um, here's a male kind of camping out under here. It's actually one of his favorite spots. Um, and I really do hope that that moss takes off around the pond. Um, that would look really cool, I think, if it kind of branched off. And it kind of started to spread a bit, but I mean, who's to say if it'll, if it'll keep. Um, in the water there is just some hyacinth. And, you know, typically people just line the pond with stones and flagstone. And I, I just don't like the look of that. I'm trying to go for something more natural looking. Um, so we'll see what happens in the spring. Uh, you know, only time will tell. So um, this path here is definitely money and, it, and the turtles definitely utilize that. Uh, and once again, um, here's some more liner popping up from underneath that log and there's little spots where you can see it and uh, so we'll see what happens. If I got to throw more soil down, I'll do so. Uh, this log here, I'm trying to get around. That was kind of a bad spot for me to place that um, just for navigating around. And, and last time, you know, I had the enclosure I felt looked really nice, very natural, but you could not really walk around in there without looking at each step. So I, I want to see what I can do as far as uh, improving that with this one. And here's a male I showed him in the last video, I believe. Um, once again, my phone doing its best to drive me insane. So this is a real gorgeous male. 
Um, I guess I'm just going to tuck them back in there. Um, and this log here, I drug up from the woods. I mean, it had to have weighed at least 120 pounds. It was insane. You can kind of see the depressions that our turtles do go under there. I did s stick a bunch of rocks down there so they could not burrow too deep where I could not retrieve them. Um, here, that little side enclosure, um, I had my wood turtles out there, North American wood turtles. Um, and here I'm just kind of scanning things around. God knows what I was talking about uh, when I was doing this commentary live. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it just, uh, it's kind of ruined at this point. But uh, there's a log that I had in the previous enclosure. Once again, front entrance, side entrance. Done so that uh, turtles can't come and go as they please and they don't stack up. And like I said, that enclosure there is just something I threw together for the wood turtles to keep them outside. Um, and I do have the fence, the electric wire running around that perimeter, but that is locked because they are too small. Um, although they're getting quite large, I do have videos of those on my channel if you're interested. Um, and here's a look at these weeds. They're all dying down. It was quite dense. I mean, there could be six turtles in there and I, you couldn't even see them. All the rock work that I used is is granite boulders. I don't believe I utilized anything else. Um, so pretty straightforward, similar to my last setup. Um, here I'm talking about the wire again. Um, I, there's a lot more predators in this area. Uh, my last yard was fenced in, but you know, so far I haven't seen any evidence of them anywhere near this thing. My wife's dog did bump into it. It was uh, <laughs> it was pretty funny. But he's fine. Uh, it's designed only for small animals, you know, up to two acres it covers. So um, here once again uh, is Shelly, and this is a, another smaller male. Um, and unfortunately, by the time I really got around to making this footage, I mean, they were in here for a couple months at the time, but 60 degrees, you know, it, it was, they're not that active, and I, and I wish that I would have gotten something else. You know, to share but at the time uh, you know, I figured I'm just gonna throw a video together and show you what I do have um, this guy he, he's a shyer animal but he's got a really cool looking face kind of like a burgundy almost and then that white beard around his uh, his face as well looks pretty sharp so unfortunately that's all I really have for footage um, some of the other stuff is just unusable um, and uh, as I do live in Northern Illinois, and I know that most of these turtles are from Mississippi, I do not keep them outside all year round. Um, this picture on screen now is the last turtle I dug up. This was around mid to late November. All the animals spend the winter hibernating in a dedicated refrigerator. It is not a fridge freezer combo, just a fridge. And I keep that at 40 degrees. That may fluctuate down to about 30 and a, eight and a half. Um, but they spend, you know, several months in there and I hope that uh, depending on weather that I will remove them and kind of tuck them away back in the enclosure sometime around early to late April. Again, weather dependent, unfortunately. So that pretty much wraps things up. That's all I really have to give you on this video. Uh, those of you who actually watched this till the end that actually subscribe to my channel because of you know, African cichlids. Um, I do have more of that coming in the future. Uh, recently got the basement finished and Set up the whole wall of display tanks right now. I've got two 125s, a 180. I got one more 180 to move down here. So I hope you'll be bringing some more of that stuff. And uh, but I also have you know other interests, which obviously is turtles. So I plan on making that those types of videos as well. I just you know I have no timetable. I I make videos when I can and when I feel like it. Um, so that's that and. Uh, just uh, thank you for watching, 
and you take care now. Mm-hmm.